Hey guys, today we're making a battery spot welder and that's why there is this giant car battery um, on my desk. Let's go through the list of materials that we would need to build our own battery spot welder. So on the big items, we need the big battery. Uh, this one is a 440 um, CCA, which is cold cranking amps, but you can get anywhere between um, 300 up to 500 cold cr cranking amps. That should be fine. And uh, also, also this battery is not 100% new. This is a used battery and uh, you would be fine if you are using a battery which is above anywhere uh, above 50% of its capacity. Now these are uh, really thick 4 AWG or 25 millimeter square wires. And as you can see, these are like stranded wires. It's not a single core. It's got fine uh, strands of wire coming out of it. So uh, use that if possible. These are really good conductors and also these are really uh, flexible. And then obviously you're gonna need these battery terminals to connect these wires. You can get terminals from uh, your local auto shop. That's not a problem. And then at the end of these, you would kind of need uh, these lugs. And um, I have these lugs. I'll leave a link uh, below where you can purchase these in bulk for about a dollar or two but make sure these are like good copper lugs even though they, they look like they are stainless steel but these are uh, copper lugs and once these go here uh, to these two wires you are gonna come to your holder now obviously one of the reasons we're doing this is the cost and if you look at the cost of a spot welder it's anything from 200 and 250 dollars upwards so the cheapest one you will get is for 200 dollars even a pen like this uh, would cost you $60 at the minimum, even on the cheapest eBay or AliExpress um, deals. So uh, once we have this 3D printed, this is uh, how it's going to work. We have two springs. Um, we have two of these lugs on the back of these copper rods. And then we have these small copper rods that I have already soldered. Uh, this one is not a good solder, so I'm going to have to solder again. I'll show you how. And you also have to solder this lug here to this one. As you can see, it's pretty loose. After that, we're going to attach this button. And this button should fit here perfectly. So we're going to have to attach this button. Put it um, in this button holder. Yeah, perfect. It's... Um, I'm probably going to have to trim uh, this because the button is hardly moving. You can see it's stuck there. So if you trim it a little bit, uh, that should uh, make this perfect. And then maybe I'll uh, cement it with some hot glue. If you don't have a 3D printer, you can buy one of those um, uh, connectors that uh, Dark Kevin is using in making his build. And by the way, he's made a really good system. And I've learned a lot from him. Uh, so go check out his video and give him a thumbs up for that. Now this is based on something called the ZBU, uh, which I think is made by a Russian guy, but I didn't uh, really like his design, even though it seems to work. So uh, I'm going for this one, um, which is also made, uh, uh, I forgot the name of the guy, but um, he's done a good job. There, I mean, there are some improvements that I could have done, but for the most part, uh, this works. So once you have this, um, you're going to need electrodes. Uh, I'm going to leave a link for these big electrodes. I forget the size of them. And then I had these small electrodes. These are small electrodes I ordered. And they are uh, complete with like um, a tip. And obviously you're going to need some, uh, some screws. I've just uh, soldered uh, the smaller copper rod inside the bigger copper rod by drilling a hole into it. And I've just used a uh, regular solder, uh, but I've used a flame gun to heat it to uh, a nice um, 500 or 600 degrees until it's almost greenish. And then um, remove the flame and just kind of put in uh, uh, the solder in there. And that holds just fine. You can see here, these are a good joint. This may be not so good, but uh, it should work. Once you've done that, I've done the same to the back. And that's how I've uh, soldered the lugs on here. What you want to do is uh, get your little spring in here 
and um, install it from this side and, it, and once uh, the spring is through you can see there you have to insert uh, your screw in there and uh, just kind of tighten it a little bit not too much so once you kind of get the screw uh, through and you tighten it um, uh, basically your pen is ready See the whole thing is quite springy so it goes back into place so the idea is that um, when this goes up as you push it this is gonna flick a button and then this thing goes on the side here like this okay so as the screw comes up like this it it flicks this button and now um, once you've done the switch the way I've shown you uh, th this is how the wires will go and then um, these will go back to the battery and we'll see in a while how that um, is connected okay so this is really basically it right um, this is our complete setup we've got our battery uh, we've got our battery and then we have got that relay that I'm gonna explain to you in a second and then we've got two big wires which are going straight into our holder and then we've got um, two small wires that are attached to the button that just built and these two wires are, are going to the positive and one is going through the relay to the negative so what I want to do right now is explain what is going on here because uh, some of you might find the circuit confusing okay so let's draw the um, bird's eye view of our setup right so this is our battery this is a positive and this is a negative and it doesn't matter in this in this setup it might matter and it would matter in other circuits but in this circuit there is no positive or negative doesn't matter then we have our little relay which looks like this it's got two big leads a positive and a negative again doesn't matter and then it's got two small um, terminals it's got two small terminals um, again there is no um, polarity and then we've got a pen right and the pen has uh, two wires, big wires coming in. And then it's got the rods that are actually welding. And then it's got uh, a button here. All right. Um, then we've got two big wires going one each to the positive and the negative. And then we've got smaller wires that uh, I'm going to have to use some other color just to make it simple. So we've got uh, two wires coming from the button. And uh, one of them is just going to the positive terminal. And, and you can see that here. One of them is just going to one terminal. And the other one is, is going to the relay, right? So this is the second wire, which is going to the relay. And I'm sorry, this is um, not how it's connected. Actually, the bigger wire is going to one of the big terminals of the relay and then that is going to the negative so between the battery and the pen there is a disconnect here because of that relay and you can see it here you can see it here this wire is going to the relay one terminal of the relay here and then it's coming off the other terminal and going to the pen or schematic this is how it's represented okay so that's a big line that's a big wire which is carrying the current and then our small signal wire it goes to the small terminal of the relay and then from the small terminal again it's the same thing it goes to the negative of the battery and you can see these two small terminals these two screws here one wire is going to one of the terminals and then and you're obviously wondering what that thing is um, let's take a closer look turn it around this is a switch right so I added this as a safety extra safety precaution when I'm not using the machine I just uh, turn the whole thing off so that even by accident I mean even by accident if somebody presses the pen um, it doesn't send through uh, all the 300 amps so the switch isn't 100% necessary if you want to add the switch what I did is um, anywhere on the signal wire you just um, add one of the switch and connect the normally open terminals here and that way if you close the switch the whole third circuit the whole circuit will be closed again this is not necessary so how does this thing work now we have the schematic right 
we have a little button here as you saw and as you as i press down the pen right let's see our pen so as i'm pressing down on the pen what's happening is this is pushing the button here right you see that uh, little thing is being pushed and you should be able to hear it yeah that click that's uh, that's the button clicking so once we click the button here what happens is this becomes a short circuit right and current flows through here to here and provided we have uh, kept this switch open it goes through here and uh, those 12 volts triggers a magnet here in the relay to close this circuit right the bigger one so once we close a smaller circuit it triggers the bigger circuit to be closed and that's a click that you hear on the relay so let's uh let's switch it on now and let's see if, uh when we click this button right uh my terminal got disconnected i have to find a more permanent way of connecting it right now this is just testing phase so anyway um so we were talking about the click in the relay once you push this pin see that click what's happening is it's shorting these two terminals so that the current can flow from the battery through it so uh once you once you press it um it clicks and then these two click together and what happens is uh current can now flow through the bigger wires because these are shorted and um current goes through here and then on your uh, nickel strip and your battery uh, current goes through from one terminal through to the other terminal and in the process just kind of melts uh, the nickel quickly um, and uh, it joins these two uh, metal surfaces together just like a welder <clears throat> all right so we've got our uh, switch on and uh, this is our nickel strip so let's see what kind of fireworks we get whoa those are some nice fireworks let's try again as you see I just keep it pressed for just a slight moment and it gives off a powerful powerful spark let's try one more time No, oh, it's stuck to the base now. Well, this is not this is not good. As you can see, it's just punching holes through the strip. It's so strong; it's punching holes through the strip. That's the reason you don't test on your battery. Because if I were to do this on a battery, I would puncture the battery and most likely um, cause a fire or an explosion of some sort so this is no good this is too strong so what's the solution here well we have to somehow shorten the time of the pulse but as you can see if you press it down and by the you by the time you go up you know that's that's the minimum time you can um, you can have it for example look at this I, I can't make the pulse shorter than this with my hands that's that's the fastest I can do and that's still very very strong I mean it's straight away punching a hole so what I'm gonna do is get one of these timers and uh, install it um, in the system so that I can really time the pulse to a tiny little time and then that way uh, we can control uh, how much power is going through it and how much time so until that time uh, this system is still incomplete but um, if you want to go ahead and build it I'm gonna give a link below for all the items thanks for watching guys uh, hope you enjoyed this project and uh, I'm gonna see you next week uh, hopefully with a timer module and we're gonna finally go ahead and weld some battery packs together